So let's get over to how alternate current is going to be produced. Uh, in 1831, Michael Faraday, I love Michael Faraday. You know what read about Michael Faraday? He is, he just, he loved his wife. He, he, he loved his craft. He came from humble beginnings at a time that somebody in, in his class in England would have never achieved anything. And he never really became what, he, what somebody else would have been because aristocrat. But he just had a passion. And so this is a person I love. Michael Faraday, does, you know Michael Faraday made the first motor? Did you guys know that? Huh. No. He was the person that made the first motor motion. So take a look at that, find out about that. It's pretty simple. Wow. I forgot exactly how it did. But it was mostly something that was sitting in a jar and then it, it, it moved around. I had no clue. Yeah, it, it, it just kind of moved around. So that was one of the fun things about Michael Faraday. Okay, so anyways, he discovered that electricity could be produced from a source other than a battery. You could produce electricity from battery. Now, uh, Alstead, discovered that electricity had a magnetic field, right? He was in 1820s. Michael Faraday's 1831, like 11 years later. You now, these guys are all studying everybody else. He goes, wait a minute now. You know, if electricity could create a magnetic field, he said, well, I wonder if a magnetic field could create electricity. electricity. He kind of took the next step there. And then he knew that electricity could be used to produce electromagnetic field and wonder if a magnet could be used to generate electricity. And Michael Faraday, and I can't remember exactly how it was, it was his information that was used to discover radar. And a radar was a very secretive thing, and the British were the first to discover radar. And they used radar to be able to detect, in, in World War, I can't remember, maybe it's probably World War I, to detect the Germans' planes. But the problem was, when they detected German planes, and they knew what was going on, the, the Germans, I mean, the the British could not actually attack all the planes that they knew were coming because if they knew the, they attacked all the planes, well, then the Germans were like, wait a minute now, how do these guys know what's going on here? So they had to like, okay, well, we can't, we know they're coming, we know they're gonna destroy all these people and kill people, but we can't do anything about it because radar shows are there, but we have to selectively decide which battles we're going to choose, okay? So this, this is electromagnetic fields was the evolution, and he started that whole concept there. And if you read the story about Michael Faraday, if I remember right, there was something in, he was in a room, he did something, and he had a wire in a dark room, and then he was able to see a spark. He thought, wait a minute now, I wonder if magnetic fields can create a light. And then he was in a dark room, and because he had this wire coil, and he, he separated, and he did whatever he did to create the magnetic field, it created a spark, and then he was able to prove that in reality, that was something going on. So he was able to now generate an electrical signal. Look, you gotta read about some of these guys. Faraday discovered, let me go here, that when he moved a magnet inside of a coil of wire, he was able to measure a pulse of electric current with a measuring instrument called the galvanometer. Eric, find Gal out about the galvanometer. Gal galvanometer. Uh, galvanometer. Probably from Galvanometer. Bob Galvin. Galva galvanometer. 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 <laughs> <laughs> galvanometer. No, it's galvanometer. Galvanometer. Okay, whatever. So I'm going. All right. So he used this galvanometer when he pulled the magnet out of the coil of the wire. He measured another electrical pulse. So uh, if I remember right, wait. Well, let me go to the next picture here. Faraday discovered that a magnet that pushes into or pulls out of a coil of wire causes the current in the wire to move in a specific direction, uh, alternating current, relative to the movement of the magnetic field of the magnet. So here's the galvanometer. And so here's the loop of wire. We don't know about loops of wires. We know that you can bring the intensity. And we talked about if you carry current in a wire, it creates an electromagnetic field. He wondered, well, what do you mean about? What if I put a magnetic field in the wire would that then create the movement of electrons? And then he had a gal galvanometer that measured that. And of course, you can see, you push it in, okay, that peg to the right, he pulled it out, that peg to the left. Interesting, so now we went from static electricity to Leyden jars and all these other things to Volta, Andre Volta, right? Uh, uh, and then we had batteries. Now we can now get 
current by moving magnets. And so this thing all built in there. Mario, you gonna say something? Yeah, just a, a quick comment. And this, this ties into Eric's uh, point where he talks about the electron and it moves the... That is called the um, drift theory. Um, how, how, how far the drift. electron drift theory, how far they wiggle back and forth. Okay. All right. Luigi, Luigi Galvani. Ah, Luigi. Luigi Galvani. Luigi. What, what, tell, tell us about Luigi. What, what do we well, know about him? in 1791, discovered the principle of the frog. Oh, that's Galvanisco. right. He was the guy with the frog. Remember, he put yep, the wires on the yep. frog and the leg moved? Yeah. And that's... then he threw it back in the pond and then it sank. <laughs> But the galvanometer, uh, the observation first noted by Hans Christian Oersted that a magnetic compass's needle deflects. So it makes perfect sense if you're thinking of a needle, uh, a compass needle moving. Yeah. Right. Well, then, well, let's make a meter that looks the same way. And so right. you have now you have a galvanometer and the needle moves. So Alstead says, hey, I noticed this. This guy's trying to do frog legs. You realize that? Then we all of a sudden we put a little meter in there. We can measure what's going on. And now all of a sudden you get a, you get a wire or you get a magnet. You push it in. You push it out. We can see the, the needle moving. We, we, we are proving, right, that there is something going on with magnetic fields. They didn't know what this stuff later on. Right. Now, knowing that, generators can be used to produce current flow. To do so, a magnetic field must have relative motion to the coil of wire. So now we know if we can get a magnetic field relative to a coil of wire, we can actually cause electrons to move. And of course, it opens up a whole other universe of generating facilities and generating power plant. All right, Brian, I'm gonna let you go ahead and, and, and describe this for us here. I know we did it once before, and sure. let's just see if we can just kind of pick up on that. Knowing what Michael Faraday had, had proven, Right, that all of a sudden moving a magnet in a wire causes electrons to go one direction and go the other direction. That's the movement that's generating current flow. Well, since we already mm -hmm. talked about this once, let's let's take it up maybe a little a level and okay. not go into quite so much detail talking about the fields and but the general idea being here now is that we're putting mechanical energy in, we're moving the wires through the magnetic fields, and the magnetic field, because the wire's moving, is switching North, south, north, south, every crank. Hold on. It's flipping This on the wire right here is on the north side, right? Right. And so we're gonna get a certain current flow in this loop one, here. One direction, right? But then once this thing rotates all the way around, it comes over here, now it's-, it's gonna go the other direction. It's cutting the, a different one. Well, now it's moving in the different direction. It's so actually 180 degrees the opposite direction because it's a big circle. Those loops are just going in a circle, 180 degrees. So it's that relative motion. Back and forth, back and forth. The key is what Mario was just saying, but if we don't turn this- There's no current flow. There's no current flow. Right. It can only happen as long as you rotate it. You can't, you can't get like a generator and let it just sit there. But if we can put a generator in a, a, in a, on a yeah. wind pan, a wind, what do you call that? A wind, wind turbine. Wind, wind turbine. turbine. Yeah. Well, then as the wind, it's just turning. Well, and of that, course, it's gears to make it turn it's at a certain speed. that concept we talked about earlier, and that is that you can't create energy, right? So you have to put energy oh, in oh, yeah, to yeah. change it to a different kind of energy. So if, this is why theory is so important. If you can understand the concept behind it, you're like, well, if a generator can make power, how come it has to spin? Well, it's really easy because if you don't put energy in, you can't get energy out. No free lunch. No free lunch. So you have to put the energy in. Hey, listen, the wind in is some there. Form. Oklahoma. I mean, you go across Oklahoma and Texas, I mean, there are thousands and thousands of wind. Well, the wind is already there. The energy right. is already there. Yeah, 100%. Okay, well, if we can then turn something, and the more that we can turn it, obviously, the, the greater amount of force, converting force into actual, uh, then if we can change it, moving electrons, then we can move those electrons to where we want to so that we can go ahead and then have a light turn on right. somewhere else. And that's just. And we spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to turn that wheel. With other methods, right? We put we we've done used water. We've used wind. I you know people put put it on bikes, bikes. right? Yep. You know, ride a bike right, and, right. and all that. So we do everything we can to try to figure out how to turn that wheel to 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 move that conductor inside of that magnetic field yep. to create power. I have a hybrid vehicle, and you can put it in a mode there, and you can see that when you go to slow down, mm -hmm. it charges the batteries in the yep. vehicle. Yeah, that's a, yeah. They're doing that in the vehicles. They're doing the uh, the braking, and right. they're doing the. They're trying to take some of the wind because uh, you know they try. If I can funnel the wind through some turbines inside of the vehicle, so no matter what environment you're in, 
whether it's a residential, commercial, industrial, or utilities, right, trying to generate power, everybody's trying to solve how do I turn that little wheel, which yep. works yeah. off of that basic fundamental in different ways. Michael Faraday said, hey, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if a magnet, if he went <laughs> yeah. through a wire and you pull it back out, you know what I mean? Because Orsted had that little thing there and the Galvo yep. guy, you know I mean? Everything else like that. And then the next thing is like, well, how can I get the most amount of energy, right? How can we get the most efficient? Yeah. yeah. Because the wind is big out there. Okay, this is so cool. This is cool. <laughs> Thank you.